Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Safe Sci-Fi Podcast. Uh, this week, we are joined once again by the man himself, DC Danes, uh, writer of The Star Crystal. Ha ha, got it right. Got it right. <laughs> yeah. Got it yeah. right. Also got a couple of friends from the Brisbane area. We have Stuart and David. Since we have another David, he'll be going by Hawk. Just makes it a little bit easier to mix it up. Even guys. Hello, everyone. So, first up, we uh, have... Whoops, I forgot to add that to the thing. That would be a good thing to have in the thing. Um, First up, we're going to have a little little bit of a listen to the audio from the Age of Ultron trailer. Um, After that's finished, we're going to have a discussion on what we think from the trailer and what we expect from the movie. So... Just hang around for a couple of minutes and we'll be right back. I'm going to show you something beautiful. Everyone screaming for mercy. You want to protect the world, but you don't want it to change. You're all puppets. Tangled in strings. Strings. started us on. Nothing lasts forever. Okay, so that was the audio from the Avengers Age of Ultron trailer. Um, For those of you who haven't seen it, you have my permission to stop listening to this podcast, flip your phone out or jump on the computer and watch it now. If you do not watch it now, you cannot blame us. So, go right ahead. We'll talk amongst ourselves for 30 seconds. Blah, 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 blah. (laughs) So, um, anyway... We'll start with Stuart. What did you think of the the trailer when you first saw it? Uh, well, I, uh, uh, first time I saw it, I'm really excited for it because I have read a lot of the Marvel side and really love the look of the um, Hulkbuster outfit. I that was that was epic. That was one of my moments where I sort of sat there and went. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, 
What else can I say from what I've seen? Um, Ultron looks really amazing as well. I think they've really yeah. done an amazing uh, work with the design over the outfit as well. So, yeah, Ult Ultron looked like one of the robots from Destiny. What do you think of it, uh, Hawk? Just like the other uh, comrade here, I was absolutely f stunned by the way it looks. I can't wait to get my hands onto the onto a Hulkbuster. Let's say that the again. The preview, little preview we had of a Hulkbuster style armor in Iron Man 3 gave me a hint it was coming. But to paraphrase a friend who wa was watching it next to me at the time, was, is Tony overcompensating for something? <laughs> well, considering you punch a rage monster, you make it angrier. It's not necessarily the best way to stop a rage monster. <laughs> no, and I've also seen a comic from the past where basically a giant flying Iron Man armor hit the Hulk with a mega particle beam and all it did was tickle. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Iron Man is going to lose the Hulk versus Iron Man fight. And that comes down to that little scene with Scarlet Johansson, uh, not Scarlet Johansson, um, Black Widow, Black Pepper? Widow, yeah. Black Widow. I knew who I meant, I got everything else wrong, like always. Um, yeah, with her holding her hand out to the Hulk. That, to me, looks like one of those moments where the Hulk is sort of gonna flick or flash or do something and, um, sort of revert back. You also got a couple of shots of them up in the Marvel, the Avengers Tower, or I think it is. And, um, you sort of see, mild spoilers, I have read some inside goss, so I'll try not to ruin the movie too much, but, yeah, bad luck to you, you're listening to a sci-fi podcast about, that's talking about Marvel, you should not be surprised about spoilers. You have been warned. Anyway, um, the, the basic premise of the story is that Tony Stark is trying to build an army of robot suits to sort of replace the Avengers as the world's sort of guardian. That way they can sort of be everywhere and protect the world remotely and he doesn't have to worry about it anymore. He can just go off and do pepper pots every night. Um, Avengers or S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, both. Um, and well? Yeah. Well, <laughs> as one of them he infused his sort of personality into and when a tad psycho because... It's Tony Stark's personality, and became Ultron. Um, so, I actually yeah. thought it was corrupted Jarvis. Um, no, Jarvis actually ends up inside the Vision, which wasn't shown in the trailer, but it, he has been shown in the um, the giant poster thing that they released at Comic Con. So, he was in the background, sort of looked like Magneto in the background. That was that was the Vision. Ah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it definitely looks like it's going to be one of those sort of another one of those Marvel movies where it's I will watch it three times in cinema just to get all the jokes. So put your hands up who hasn't done that at least once. <laughs> We're all looking at you, DC. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I gotta watch the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just take a minute to say... Uh, I feel like an outsider right now. Yeah. Can I just take a minute to say that... Uh, I will, I mean, since I saw this, I now have a really big question, and it's probably going to annoy a lot of people. What outfit looks better? The Hulkbuster? Or the or the, um, the outfit from the Superman Batman movie? Hulkbuster. Hulkbuster. <laughs> I, I had to ask it. Uh, might, might just because I'm partial to giant robots or mechs that kick ass, but Hulkbuster. <laughs> yeah, uh, sadly similar reasoning. Oh, you get that. Um, yeah. Ah, bug. Stupid bug. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's have a look at. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Before I forget. The winner of the enemy ultimate ship for the ship sensors, that was Liata with Vol, um, Volon upgrades. Now, I haven't seen Babylon 5, so I have no idea who she is, but 
you guys wanted it, so you guys got it. So she'll pit up against bloody, what's his face, Heimdall. Um, which is the ship senses for the ultimate ship. <laughs> it still makes me giggle every time I think about it. Seeing him up on Destiny's lookout, just sort of going, yes, there's an enemy ship, we need to target that. That's what actually was in my head. <laughs> so, um, so, anyway, so we're going to duck off very quickly to our first ad break. Um, so... That will be the Infinity Blade Chronicles trailer, and followed. Uh, no, it'll be the the <laughs> it'll be DC Dane's book trailer followed by the Infinity Blade trailer. So, if you don't want to listen to the ads, you can skip forward about two minutes or so. So, have fun, and we'll see you on the other side of the ad break. Before, before there was dust. Before the air became poison. Before the companies. Strays, dragon smugglers and thieves. Will they prevail? WWW the Star Crystal. Remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. It came as all discoveries do, welcomed with excitement and skepticism. Man had conquered his most primal fear, death. The age of the post-human would begin, but the gift of immortality was withheld, protected by the powerful. The search for God was over. They had become eternal. They became the Deathless. Ruling a world cleansed by fire time and again according to their reproach. For a hundred thousand years we've suffered under their undying shadow. We've had no hope. Until now. again uh thanks for listening to the ads the last one was the infinity blade chronicles ad which doesn't really say that it's the infinity blade chronicles ad because it's i just ripped the audio from the video track so that's a thing um now we move on to the main event doctor who specific now, now, now i've seen the hulk suit crusher thingy and you go into the next one yep <laughs> you go to doctor who that i haven't watched <laughs> 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 I'm seeing a freaking pattern here. <laughs> hey, hold on, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to fast forward a few Doctor Who episodes while you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the highlights. Uh, oh no! Yay, winning! <laughs> <laughs> I'm an author. I don't get time to watch TV. <laughs> yeah, but you get to write awesome books. That's just you sort of, you sort of get forgiveness for that one. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> anyway, well, what do we think of the new Doctor? I like him. He's a breath of fresh air from what we've had. Because we've had three Doctors of young and full of... Zest. Zest. Now we've got this older guy who's definitely different. And Darker. doesn't really... Scottish. Hit the points Dang, that, I like that. <laughs> that everyone's used to the Doctor hitting of late. Yeah. And you, you can actually see that um, if you look at some of the live ratings, the Watch It Live is down about half of what the Matt Smith is, but the Watch It with sort of recordings, so sort of within the first sort of week or so, 
that is still above Matt Smith. It's actually averaging this season more viewers per episode on average than the first two Matt, C- uh, Matt Smith series. So that sort of shows that he does have the pulling power needed to be a good doctor. It's just, yeah, I'm I'm still in the sort of the not quite sure of him bracket. So... A lot of the complaints I've heard against him is he's... Okay, so that's Peter Capaldi. The... Yeah, correct. Yeah. He doesn't have the flirty aspect that doctors of late have all seemed to have had. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry, but you want an older guy... you. To flirt with the younger Clara, it it just doesn't work. She cooked her hair. Agreed. It's I think it the fact that work. there's no flirtage there is a really good thing. Oh, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with that point. Um, it's more of a he's less empathic. He's less. It's a lot harder to sort of relate to him as a character, simply because he, lack of a better way of putting, it, he doesn't seem to care. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's fed up and he doesn't want to do anything anymore. Yeah, he's just like. I've made lots of mistakes, so have he fun on your own. Married, must have been married with kids at one stage. Well, he did marry Ross. He married River, he married River <laughs> remember, so... He's yeah. had two or three wives by this point, if I remember correctly, through the law. He, he was a grandfather when it, the show started, so... <laughs> yeah, he's a grandfather. He, he dumped... has a doctor. He saw his doctor when David Tennant was a doctor. Yeah, and he, he, he dumped so... the, the granddaughter on a random planet, so... Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, I actually think that the first cup, the first episode was is decent. The Dalek one was a little bit sort of air. Eh. The next, the Robin Hood one was very air. Eh. The um, what other ones were there? There was the oh, we just had the uh... the school one was very air. Eh. The most recent one was not that bad. The one that aired last night was pretty decent. Um. It's not a very good track record. and <laughs> uh, 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 too decent. Well, I've got to admit that it's been building up to next week's episode, which, spoilers if you haven't seen it yet, but seems to be the farewell for Clara. Yeah, it, um, it was semi-announced earlier in the year that she was potentially leaving, so that's a thing. Um... So yeah, um, looks like she might actually be leaving. I've sort of been sitting in the not too sure boat on that one, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Random note, just so everyone's on the same page. Stuart has temporarily dropped out of the call. Not sure why. We'll try and get him back. Um, since it's he it was the th- third person. Not sure why he dropped out, but he has. Um, yeah. So if okay then, if Clara goes, who would we want as a replacement companion? But would we want another Earth? Dalek. <laughs> that would Honest, be the... honestly. I don't think we need another. I think we need a break from the Earth women that we've had of late. If I remember correctly, in the earlier series, they had a couple of them. Of the companions were males from other planets other than Earth. I think we might need to have something like that just for a bit of a change. Yeah. Um, what I'd love to see is a return to the old days, even the Eccleston days, of a rolling roster. Where we've got these people, they come and they go, but there's always sort of two or three people sort of around him. Because I think this Doctor would need... He he doesn't, doesn't... For me, at least, doesn't seem to do too well with just one companion. He really needs sort of... Um, probably needs two or three... And with Clara and the boyfriend refusing to sort of join him, it's he's not going to get it with Clara. So, and what I'm hoping for is an alien, humanoid, yeah, humanoid alien of some sort, yeah, yeah. or even that lizard woman, yeah. Oh, Vastra, Vastra, yeah, yeah. Um, now she would be a nice, or someone from her species would be a rather interesting touch, I think. Yeah, it the, would be very different from what we've had. The only downside to that is that um, the I see I, I do a bit of filming and stuff like that, so I look at shows from the production cost side of things as well. And the production cost on the makeup for the lizard is a lot. It's ridiculous to put that sort of level of makeup on. So if I was going to do an alien, I'd have human alien from either the the future or the past, maybe from another world. Um, 
something give them a different perspective than earth human yeah because our eyes have always been earth not generally speaking female occasionally captain jack because captain jack <laughs> but it was good to have that sort of variety and i'd love to sort of get back to that sort of doctor yeah, drops in was... yeah that that did take some some of the the one levelness out of it i think having jack and Jack and Rose interacting, and then later on with um, Martha. Martha, and I was going to say Rose's boyfriend, but I've forgotten what his name Mickey. is. Mickey. 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 Oh, yeah, poor Sap. Poor boy. He Mickey. always got the short end of the stick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, didn't That's have what both. he was there for. That's why I would have written except, him in. Except for the end. Of, <laughs> except for the end of, of uh, the, well, the end of Ten's TV series when he sees that he marries Martha. So yeah, he's that... got something at the end. Yeah, and I must admit, of a choice between Martha and um, Rose, I would probably go Martha too. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Because more she's because I smarter. more because I met her at Supernova, and she's awesome. Oh, yeah. And and she signed my TARDIS. Bream is awesome. And I'm sure that was an innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. Cause that's <laughs> the <thing. laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do it. Uh, oh, don't worry, I've so many innuendos happened being a Jedi, it's not even funny. <laughs> so, uh, what was the... Oh yeah, for those who are curious, Doctor Who will be returning in, for a season 9 in 2015, that's already been confirmed, there's also a Christmas special coming. The yeah. Christmas special is just, according to my mates over in the UK, it's just finished filming. Um, so it should, they should be able to get it done quite handily by... Christmas. Capaldi's still staying on the Doctor, as far as I know. Yeah, Capaldi's staying. Um, but the Clara's next, asleep, but the well. next season starts filming in January or February, so if they're filming that early, it's going to be probably cold and probably snowy, so that'll be make for some interesting locations. Mm. And considering I've actually been over to Wales and spent a week over there exploring, there is a lot of cool places over there. Like Bad Wolf Bay... Oh, <laughs> I've actually that's a beach just down the road from from Cardiff called oh. Sun Sundowner or something like that. Some something like that. It's some some raff, It's something weird like that. Anyway, um, it's about fifteen twenty minutes drive from Cardiff to get to it, and it's the beach where the Doctor leaves Rose, the beach where the Byzantium crashes, and with um, Matt Smith, Amy Pond. And River Song. Um, it's the beach from inside the alien spaceship with the dinosaurs. That and was a great episode. We saw it again recently um, in one of the episodes with Capaldi. They were they filmed there, and you could tell because the top end of the the bottom end of the beach is sand. Off to one side is the cliff face that you saw the Byzantium crashed into, and those giant rock slabs from inside the spaceship. But up the hill from the sand is all these washed, massive stones. And recently there was an episode that had um, them lounging around. I think they were either lounging around on the stones, around around near these big stones, and that's actually right there on that beach. Um, so it's that location alone has got heaps of potential for different shots and stuff. So yeah, it's a good beach. Mm. Can I just say? Uh... From a series perspective, from a reviewer, or from what I've noticed, the entire series for me has all been a tribute to, to like, previous seasons beforehand. Yeah, a lot of it has. Um, like, the I theme really... reminds me of the original thing, of, the, like, the very first Doctor Who theme. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get away from the stuff that was created with Smith, with the whole Pond show, because that really did take over from the Doctor. Mm. Yeah, so it's meant to be about the Doctor and his interactions, not not a uh, random self-insert female and her squeeze of choice. Yeah, um, but I actually liked it. I liked the chemistry between Matt Smith and Amy Pond. Um, those guys they actually had really good chemistry on screen, almost I'd say rivaling Eccleston and Piper. Mm. Um, they also had really good chemistry on screen together. Tennant really didn't have the same sort of level chemistry with um, Billy Piper Rose or even Martha. He really sort of came into his own with Donna. 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 
Donna was definitely the winner for him. And admittedly, the first time through, I didn't like Donna that much. But after rewatching it, I, I definitely have to fall into the boat of Donna was his best companion of the three. Um, well, the three mainstay companions. He had about two dozen other random here, there, everywhere companions. But yeah. He did go through them pretty quickly, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Do we dare want to go there with that? <laughs> that could be taken the wrong way, I know. Yep. Yep. Oh, well. I'll, I'll, I'll... Actually, that, that comment reminds me of something really of, um, from the Buzzcock TV episode where David Tennant um, was hosting it, and they had a bit of fun, but I can't say what it was because we have to keep it PG. <laughs> well, I uh... remember that one. Where he... Where he used this at the end of it after getting heckled by um, Donna's actress for so long, he turned her into a Billy Piper doll. Yeah. <laughs> With a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was great. Oh. Um, have ooh, any, anyone out there heard the French Dalek? Oh, I've heard of that. Oh, God. Someone went in and Monty Python, the Holy Grail, the... Um, the season one episode that had the Dalek in it where they found him in the vault. God, that's funny. Oh. You haven't watched it, YouTube the French <laughs> Dalek. You will die laughing. Oh, just, I'm trying not to laugh crazy and even just hearing it. Um, what did you guys think of that? It was in the Tenant era. I think it was at the end of the Piper arc? Before he met up with Martha or before, between Martha and Donna? The Christmas special there? The they did you see the little short they did before the Christmas special? Where they had one of the other doctors come in. Yeah, the old doctor come in and yeah. it's like Don't forget to put this on, and you still forget to put it on. And then the next thing you see is he's holding a life preserver from the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> Going, oh, no, what? <laughs> yeah, that was no, no, a that, was, that was after Martha. That was after Martha. That was after Martha, yeah. Between Martha and Donna. Yeah. Yeah. It was when um Peter Davison came on, who's David Tennant's father in law. Yeah, because yeah, God, that. That, uh, David Tennant married the doctor's daughter, <laughs> who <laughs> became wife, then plays the doctor's daughter. Plays the, the doctor's show. daughter in the TV series. It's it's just wibbly wobbly, complicated, timey wimey stuff. You know what needs to happen? <laughs> I had David to Tennant say it eventually. Have... No, no, no. <laughs> David Tennant needs to have a child, and that child needs to have needs to become the doctor. Then have the three of them do an episode together. Oh god, there goes the planet. <laughs> no, 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 oh no, 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 no. Sorry, there goes the continuum. No, no, you, you're, you're still missing a point. The third... God, the third... Um, the David Tennant's kid has to then marry the daughter of another one of the Time Lords. And then have a kid. And then let the evil ensue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez! Uh... Tennant had to do an okay. episode called "The Doctor's Daughter." Yeah, and that was yeah. his wife that played the Doctor's <laughs> daughter. Wow! And I thought the, the, I wrote some weird scripts. The Doctor's daughter <laughs> is played by the Doctor's daughter. His wife, it's so great. Uh, true, real life is far more fickle than fiction. I've actually, I've actually, um, I've actually met Peter Davison in real life, and um. He, he was, came over when I did the orchestra earlier in the year, because he was promoting it. Yeah. And uh, me and my girlfriend went, because she's a massive Hoofian as well, which is great for me. And um, but so bastard. I was in the line, and it was just after England lost the Ashes. So spitingly, I go to, to him, I give him a cricket back to sign, and, like, and I was like, So, have you enjoyed the cricket so far? <laughs> Guess what his answer is? He actually pulled this perfectly back on me. His answer was, oh, I've been watching the women's cricket. Now, the women's English team at the t at time actually beat the Australian women's cricket team. <laughs> That's a win. I remember that one. Uh, okay. Uh... Sorry. Also, there's this one thing that I hope will happen <laughs> with Capaldi's Doctor. I want an episode with Weeping Angels in it, just to see what his what his response would be to him. He would just stare at him with his evil eyebrows and they disintegrate. <laughs> Attack eyebrows, go! Chop, 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 chop. I've got to admit, compared to Smith 
with Cap Capaldi versus Weeping Angels, I feel sorry for the Angels. Yeah. I feel sorry for anything compared compared to Capaldi's doctor. I, 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 oh, I, I hope they out. bring back the Master. Yeah. Well, that that's one I want to bring up next. Missy. Missy, yeah. I'll, I've been waiting for Missy to come up. I think she is a female master. No. She's but a... well, not not like a direct master. Like remember the um when the master came back with in Tenants era with the, through the um the pocket watch. Yeah. I think there's like a spirit, like a bit of the master in Missy that'll like come at it or some problem. Or yeah. in Clara. There's sort of there's there's three competing theories at the moment for who Missy is. And um, one is, and I actually like the third one, so I'll leave it to last because that's my favourite. Even though it's probably not gonna, it's not true, but I'd, I'd like it. Um, one is Missy is the master, which I, I don't think there is any evidence to support that whatsoever. Two, Missy is the Rani. Again, Ooh, don't think great. there's much evidence to support that one either. No, but it'd be really great if that was the case. Oh, it'd be cool. Don't get me wrong. The third one, and the, this theory actually stems from a ring that was seen on both characters in the same episode, on the same hand, on the same finger. The theory goes that she is Clara. I agree on that, given what I've just seen in the shorts for next week's episode. It makes sense. Yeah. Clara from the future, or Clara... Reborn, or Clara's an aspect of her. I'm not sure, but she's definitely tied to Clara somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Because what it looks like, what happens with the um, old Clara is that Missy takes over like the Clara, that, the Clara that's with the Doctor now, because she's selling up the keys to the TARDIS. And she locks him out of the TARDIS. Yeah, which the, those who haven't seen the preview for next week. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> we need. We to do apologize, like but. I need drops. I really desperately need to set up a long list of drops so that I can just have a drop of the sound of... River her... going spoilers. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, which then I... begs the question, what's Clara then? Well, what's the body of Clara then? That's with the Doctor at the moment. Well, we already know that Clara is basically the reason why he is the Doctor from the end of last season. The... Well, no, no, it would be Matt Smith. Oh, yeah, end of last season. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, another theory goes that, um... Uh, sorry. I've got a friend who wants to jump in. Oh, uh, cool. We'll jump him in in a second when he's ready. Um, I yeah. actually had a the, the, the other, theory. The other theory for what Missy is, is it's River. From inside the library. I had a thought about that. Like, the first time I saw Missy, I'm thinking, is this a sort of romantic thing with the Doctor going on there? Yeah. That's what my first... That's what my first instinct went. Yeah. Um, well, the the theory goes that the, the what we see as um, Missy is actually the remnants of River's personality inside the library computer. And mm. that's why we see so much space in this thing, because... It is the library computer, and then the library computer is the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head, which yanks people moments before death and sort of takes them away. The downside to that is that um, she's been described as the Nexus Keeper, I think it was, or something like yeah. that. Um, in the original episode, in the original script, before they changed it to Paradise. Mm. But um, I can't really sort of... Let's see if I can find it. I'm just going to Google really quickly. So, do you guys have any other ideas what you think it might be? Any other sort of theories? Not until I re watch it. <laughs> no, not off the top of my head. I've got a few things, but they don't really make overwhelming sense in it. And as such, I'm rather reluctant to throw them out there. I have I have one theory, just from what I saw from the trailer last night. Because how it shows the Cybermen. Honestly, somehow connected with them. 
Yeah. Well, one of the other theories is she's the TARDIS. Oh, Sexy's back. Yay! Except Sexy's pissed off. <laughs> I want to say something. Maybe he should have married the TARDIS. Oh, that's a scary thought. Hmm. Oh! How? Hello? Oh, I just... I just read the list of episodes. The episode titles. And it's made me think, what if she is death? Yeah, that's something that's been running through my head since she first showed up. Because the final episode of the season is called Death in Heaven. So... Yeah. I still... Well... I still have a worrying, well, not a worrying, but something that bothers me, and it was back during the 50th. Okay. The end of the 50th, when they save Gallifrey. When is all, and then, then the Christmas special, how Gallifrey gives him the gives Max Smith Doctor the, re, the regenerations. When does that come back into things? Uh, I'm sorry. Probably not during this era. Probably not during Capaldi's reign as Doc. Because originally at the end of the 50th, it, sh it, it um, had Matt Smith standing with the other Doctors, and it said he was going to go look for Gallifrey. But he never really, like, it, it, it sort of showed up in the Christmas, and then that's really it. Yeah, no, like, it's been bothering it me. hasn't been found. Remember, it was through a crack in the wall. Yes, it's, it's sort of in a sub-universe outside of our universe. And to be honest, I like the idea of it not taking one season, not taking two seasons or three seasons, but taking even sort of another four or five seasons to find Gallifrey, because... Four or five regenerations is what I'm more thinking. Yeah, that I think would be overkill. You wouldn't want to drag it out that much. There's too maybe, much maybe story too potential great. in... Um, the Search? The Search. There's a lot of story potential in The Search, but there's also a lot of story potential in the Time Lords themselves. And you don't want to jeopardise that. So, um, you want to try and get to the Time Lords, you want to show a progression of heading towards finding Gallifrey, but at the same time, you don't want it to be, oh look, the Doctor is missing Gallifrey, 13 episodes later, there's Gallifrey. You don't well, that... sort of want that progression. I'd rather have one episode here, one episode there. Almost like in Stargate, when you defeat the Ghoul, you don't have them walk up to Apophis at the end of Season 1 and see him smack him over the head with a hammer and he's gone he keeps coming back and what that Baal. sort of or Baal Baal would be a better example but um, you know what I mean it's the sort of thing which I'd love to see play out over a long period of time rather than a relatively short period of time which is why I was really sort of annoyed if um, for that Christmas special when they brought sort of Gallifrey back so to speak um, I was like oh yeah here we go we've we've sort of gone all of 10 minutes and he's found Gallifrey already and then in the end that never panned through and I was very relieved by that I was v sort of hoping that he wouldn't be able to sort of rescue Gallifrey in that moment which he couldn't which I thought was good because it sort of builds up the plot for later I actually love the, um, the fact at the end of the Christmas special that a lot of people weren't very happy with how the regeneration went because then he had that big scene on the clock tower, and then just, poof, goes into Capaldi. Yeah, but a lot of the time, um, you watch him when he regenerates, the first regeneration from Eccleston to Tennant was relatively quick. It was fairly violent from Tennant to Smith. Smith. It was um, really violent. But that's blamed on, um, at least from what I've read from the writers, the reason that was so violent was, A, they wanted to reset the TARDIS. And they figured him regenerating and destroying it would be a good way of sort of selling that point. B, they had to sort of... Exp they, they sort of explained it using the radiation, because he absorbed so much radiation, he had to bottle it up for as long as he could mm. before sort of regenerating and doing his last hurrah. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's sort of their explanation for why that one was so violent. But Matt Smith's was relatively quick. So, yeah. You never know. No. Another thing that I'm actually... Don't forget, Smith had also 
age to the point where regeneration was never going to be a long drawn out affair for him. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah. And he did Another... sort of age backwards for a little bit to begin with, so there's that. True. He went uh, from another... being completely geriatric to somewhat Smith, and then poof, Capaldi. It's like he did a Benjamin Button and then a reverse Benjamin Button. Pretty much. But you notice both times the actors who play the Doctor have gotten old when, um, when, bloody, what's his with Tenet, in the episode with, um, the, the master? master got really old, he looked like, um, they made him look like the first Doctor. Mm. When Matt Smith got really old, with a few minor changes, he looked like the first Doctor. Doctor. And I thought that's a really sort of neat touch that when you've got these two characters that are meant to be really old, you sort of make them look like the first Doctor. And the reason the first Doctor regenerated was he was so old that he had to regenerate to sort of rejuvenate himself. Mm. And he didn't even call it regeneration, he actually called it rejuvenation. So. Yeah. So, yeah. so I thought the, that was a nice touch. And the thing I love about actually with um, Peter Capaldi was the is the age because it's the same age as the first doctor yeah well my next question no, is no he's to... not the same as the first the yes, first was older no no William Hartnell was 55 when he was a doctor yeah but he looked a shit ton older than he was no I, I mean as in the actor life age. age is what I meant yeah, yeah life age agreed but the same time Capaldi doesn't much... have yeah. the same I am your grandfather you will do as I say, Dumbledore sort of appears. No, he's, he's more yeah. of the crazy uncle. Yeah, and it works for him, because it's completely different to anything else we've had of yeah. in the last ten years they've been doing Doctor Who. Because we we had, I'm crazily pissed off with Eccleston. Tenant, I'm just batshit insane. No, no, I'd, I'd say... Is the dorm, Smith is the... As the... Beaten down... Husband. Smith is the beaten down husband whose wife is still living with him but has brought the new partner into the house. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, come on, you can't deny that. The first season no. with him and, and, um... Amy. Amy was full of, oh my god, these two are heading for a relationship, and then we have Rory. Rory. <laughs> yeah. And that's where it just kind of went... Pear-shaped. It went down yeah. faster than... The Titanic? No. No, it went... I'd have to say it went down faster than the, the movie? potential than the potential ratings for Top Gun 2. Oh. When they announced they had Tom Cruise in it. That's a tad harsh. Yeah. yeah, but it did go down pretty badly. Yeah. Uh, I said I said the Doom movie. Let's let him go there. But that was I actually liked the Doom movie. Oh, I don't say I had anything wrong with the movie. It just didn't go well with everyone else. Speak, speaking yeah. of movies that went well. to crap, how, how about this? If you could unmake a sequel for a movie, what sequel would you unmake? Anything with the Transformers with Michael Bay. The first one I liked. Everything else, I afterwards, I have him to been too big on. Well, I, I, the Michael Bay Transformers movies seem to follow the the Star Trek rule of twos. The first one was good, the second one was shit, and we know why it was crap is because the writer strike. They had like two weeks to write the thing, and it yeah. feels it. The third one was all right. It wasn't as good as the first, but it was definitely nowhere as horrible as the second. And they and, sort, and it would have been a one. would have been a good bookend. And then the most recent one. Was Let's not talk about it. Yeah, it's it. If I could go back in time in the TARDIS and delete one movie from existence, it would either be that or Jurassic Park three. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And that's coming. So not... That's coming from someone who loves Jurassic Park to the point of buying the collector's edition, so that I could get a T Rex busting through the gate because it looks oh, awesome. That's great. <laughs> that statue with the collector's edition looks awesome. Amazing. See, I, I would have, it's, even though it's not sci fi, I would have Dust Till Dawn. I would have got rid of the second one of those and actually brought out a decent second Dust Till Dawn. Well, that was going to be my next question. If you could do a sequel to a movie and do it your way, or even a, we'll call it even a reboot, 
on yeah. any movie that say pre nineteen ninety, what movie would you do? Ooh, I have to it's think. All, I'd say Police Academy, but they're too much classic. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to do a Spaceballs too. Oh yes! yes! <laughs> like if you modernise it, throw st- around there doing that. Throw some Avatar in there, some Prometheus, some Transformers, some use the Schwartz again, eh? Yeah, just just. Well, they did. They did it. So they did. Terminator. Same with Man yeah, Man. Whack, whack some Terminator in there. Termin- but the- Terminator. You, you'd have to remake the second Terminator. Or I should yeah. say the third one, in the Second okay. one was pretty all- good. Third yeah, one This is one it. I would like to remake. I don't know whether it falls into the pre-90s category, but it's series started in the, pre- in the pre-90s. Die Hard 3. Oh. Which one was that one again? That was the one in New York with the freaking taxi driver. Yeah, I don't remember that. I've obviously deleted it from my memory. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't remember him either. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. Right. Number one was, was, was yeah. fantastic. Number two was fantastic. Number one was Skyscraper. Number two was Airport, yeah? Yep. Number three was New York with a freaking yeah. taxi oh, I driver. Was that the one with the helicopter and the, was the car in the helicopter? No, that was number four. Number four and number five are deserving of the Die Hard name. Number three yeah. needs to be redone in I'm a way that up. actually makes sense. Because McLean is a cop. Okay, he's a screw-up cop, but he is still a cop. So why on God's green earth would he be teamed up with a New York taxi driver? <laughs> because it makes good tea. Yeah. Because you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> and they just wanted a reason to put a black guy in as one of the main leading characters. Uh, they have a habit of doing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when if you take take the Marvel verse, by tradition, Fury is a white guy. They they cast Samuel L. Jackson as Fury, token black guy. Epic work, epically worked. But for Die Hard Three, the token black guy hero moment just didn't quite work out. Yeah. I got one. Uh, lethal weapon. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Can I just say all of them? <laughs> as long as you keep Mel Gibson in the role, because <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. he was perfect for him. Yeah, no, no. I'm not so yeah. sure about Danny Glover as uh, yeah, Murtar, no, no. You change, but... change Danny Glover and give him Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, done. I'm down with that. <laughs> Although, it's kind of hard to picture Samuel L. Jackson as the hand-pecked husband. <laughs> True. Uh, okay, then. Um, let's move on to something else. Uh, I know. The sci-fi versus this week. Did you guys see what that was? No, I haven't seen that one yet. Um, Neo uh, versus Flint. Oh, that's right. The Neo versus Flint from Tron. Yeah. Okay. Assuming the Matrix and yeah. Tron are the same computer system, who would win? The the ultimate creator or the ultimate modifier? They're one and the same, really, aren't they? That's the problem. Yeah. Well, see, Neo can't actually create new stuff. But he can effectively modify anything to the nth degree. Flynn can just create stuff for the most part. The stuff he can't make, the stuff he can make. Um, there are limitations on his build build abilities, but for the most part, anything that Neo tries to do, he could potentially counter with his creation abilities. So, who do we think would win in that slugfest? The viewer, because it would be awesome. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. It would just be complete eye candy, but... It would just be epic. <laughs> uh, the question is with that is, when would you have the... When would you base it off? Would you base it, like, if they were to do a crossover, would you base it off Neo goes into Tron's timeline, or Tron goes into um, Neo's timeline? Uh, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. How does that sound? <laughs> Because for me, see, you go. So, my my thing is, is that Neo could pretty much keep downloading moves and everything else off the program, 
to complete or continue to learn to, com to counter Flynn's attacks. So effectively, if they had the same stamina and everything else, then Neo would eventually get to the point where he could download, I suppose, something that Flynn couldn't counter. Yeah, that's a fair point. Does that make sense? Cause, yeah, because Neo could effectively, with the computer system, download anything he needs in order to help him in the fight. Um, we know that Neo is proficient in Kung Fu at the very least. Because he knows Kung Fu! <laughs> and um, from there, we know that Flynn in hand-to-hand -hand combat is not that good, relatively speaking. From mm. what we see in the movie, he is definitely not trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, but he is... But then if I was Flynn, I'd make one of those big-ass bikes and run Neo over. Yeah, exactly. Or a massive, big, you know, armoured vehicle. And exactly. Squash him. So and Neo to counter yeah. that would either just sort of stick his hand up and stop the thing from moving like he would with a bullet, or he would just Superman away. Um, but Flynn could counter the Superman Turn by doing the sucky thing that he did at the end of the Tron Legacy and suck him back down and into the ground. And yeah, mm. there's it's one of those sort of battles that would just be like it's, it's almost Superman versus Superman. You just you'd what Superman versus Hulk. Sorry. You watch the fight for the fight, not really giving a crap about the context. I think the only casualty that would result in that fight is whatever server they're on would catch fire, go radioactive, and melt down through the building to the core of the planet. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have say so much merchandise because they would be making so much stuff. It'd be suits, you know, <laughs> flying <laughs> aircraft, <laughs> you know, okay. spaceships. I'm going to say Sasek's probably going to annoy a lot of you. I'm going to go for, for Flynn for one reason and one reason only. And I'm probably going to cop a lot of flack for this. Because Flynn's got an ace up his sleeve that Neo doesn't. He can call upon Sora and his friends from Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> oh yeah, you're going to cop flack for that. <laughs> I'm going to agree. I'm going to have to agree with you on the Flynn part though. Because Neo is dependent, really comes across as dependent on the the system. Like, being, like he gets confronted with something he's not used to. Yeah, like and... when he's in the tu that tunnel loop, he was totally baffled by that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. He comes across something he's not familiar with, and suddenly he gets a, he can track down a new download to basically fill in. And that's it. He gets a new download, new skills, and is suddenly back in the in the battle. Whereas Flynn has the ability to just improvise. And Neo it's... seems to lack that. Yeah, Neo definitely sort of lacks that imagination, whereas Flynn definitely has the imagination to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. He can sort of go, huh, okay, what have we got here? We need... Um... He's flying at me with super speed. Okay, well, put my hands down, summoning jutsu. Here's a wall full of spikes. Fly to that at Mac 20. See how that affects you. And so, in effect, what we're saying is Neo lacks humanity, almost. Yeah, because the biggest just part about. of humanity is creativity. Yeah, and... Pretty much. Another thing that Neo mm, not about sort it. of has to his disadvantage is all the damage that happens to him in the world happens to him... Some... In real his life. real life. Whereas Flynn, all the damage that happens to him in that world happens to his body in that world, and he can just pull the disc off his back, flick around with some code, and fix himself, assuming he gets enough downtime to do it. Because that process admittedly isn't quick, but it could effectively heal any damage, assuming he's got two hands. They, and they don't get chopped off. In... <laughs> he chop up his hands first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, he just uses his feet. Yeah. <laughs> that too, a la BitCloud episode 1 of Zoid's New Century. <laughs> He's eating a meal with his toes and like their hands and arms. Wow, I must admit, I do like Zoids. Never expected a Zoids reference. Love Zoids. <laughs> I actually have a Blade Laker in my house. I used to have so many of those model kits, it's not funny. I had a wall of them. I had all of the zeros. I had. Yeah, anyway, that's beside the point. Back to the fight. <laughs> so, so, so what we've got, we've got, we've got two Flynns 
I would ultimately have to go with Neo, just from the combat exp- from the combat side of things. In a fight, he's got the hand to hand close range to do ridiculous amounts of damage really fast, way faster than Flynn possibly can. So it boils down to where DC falls on it. Who do you think would win? I'd have to say Neo, but yeah, <laughs> it'd just be so epic watching. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so. yeah, definitely Neo. So since I'm the host, I get two votes because oh, you bastard. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! You can't go wrong well. with that awesome black outfit he's got on either. <laughs> no, I'll admit the outfit looks much better. The than outfit is just yeah. I I, so I, actually, cool. I actually do like the Tron designs for a lot of things, like the the way yeah, they've got all the lines and stuff. That I actually quite like. Especially oh. in cosplay on a sexy lady. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Those lines look real good. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't say I that. Hope, I just hope Amy's not listening in right now, because if she is, I am boned. <laughs> Note to self, forward copy of this to Amy. <laughs> Bastard. I like that. <laughs> Make sure you got the lightsaber handy. Oh, I can help with that. <laughs> I've got about three of them. So, anyway, we're rolling into the last couple of minutes of the show so I guess it's sort of the roll down period where we do sort of wind things up uh, is there anything you guys still want to sort of touch on that we've sort of talked about so far deafening yeah, silence because I didn't know it <laughs> <laughs> well whose fault is that the, the books that he's writing um, my publishers. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That worked. And blink my dragon. He just won't get out of my head. Too many shinies. Too many shinies. Actually, he did get out of my head. That's the problem, isn't it? Anyway. Yep. Sorry. So, so who's who's actually um, putting all this this Flynn versus Neo fight? I don't um, want to see that. It's epic. We should really do a kick. Yeah, you got the mate with lightsaber. <laughs> he should, just needs to put on a full outfit. Do, do we? We should do a Kickstarter. Get get yeah. Keanu in on it. Get um, crap. I've forgotten his name. <laughs> Flynn. Forgotten the actor's name. God, I'm horrible. Oh, we do fight choreography. So get, 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 they, they get, just did that for Furway. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Get him um, in on Trump it. Versus. Uh. Actually, I forgot this while we're talking. Um, Rebel Empire workshops down in um, Maddington that I went to for quite some time. They actually did a Neo, uh, a Tron versus Matrix um, skit thing at Furwag. Fight choreography. Nice. Full on. Cool. Full if, outfits, everything. If you've got video or something like that, send us a link on Save Sci-Fi. I'd love to watch that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, sweet. Okay. Get it off. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm going to start playing the outro. Hopefully not at deafening levels like I did last week. Excellent. So anyway, um, that's the podcast done and dusted. We've got about 40 to 50 seconds left on the clock before it automatically cuts us off. So now is everybody's last chance to jump in on and sort of say anything, I guess. (laughs) Uh, Thanks Uh, for having me this week, guys. I look forward to doing this more often. Absolutely. Join in on this. Had a lot of fun. Yeah. It's definitely a blast. Stuart, if you like anime and stuff, come round to Indrapilly uh, Shopping Centre. We do an anime night every second Saturday. Yep. Yep. We just had one, so the next one's on the 8th. Next one's on the 8th. Uh, okay, this uh, 8th of November. Um, so, yeah. So, if you like your anime, come round to Indoor and jump in on it, and it's a lot of fun. We've got a fair few range of stuff to, to go to as well, so... Yeah. Starts at 4 o'clock on Saturday. I should really stay the starting time. <laughs> Starts at 4... Yeah, just randomly get them like, ah, uh, where is everybody? It kicks... We can, we can get into the room from about 3.30, kicks off at 4, goes till around 8, and then if you're interested, we head into the city afterwards for a group feed. That sounds great. It's a lot cool. of fun. Who's, who's paying for my plane ticket? <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah not me. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just, just, just his height. It's not that far from her. Each other. Oh, I'm a fair boy. Okay, anyway, 10 seconds left. Yeah, we will catch be. you guys later. Um, so long and thanks for.